the New England Patriots look mm. really, mm. really mm. bad. And if that coach's last name was Smith, he'd be fired. Okay. Mm. Mm-hmm. He'd be fired with his team looking like that. Greetings and salutations and welcome to the Odd Coaches Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Keith Adams. You can catch the Odd Coaches Podcast on YouTube, Spotify, iHeart, or wherever you get your podcast. Joining me today, special guest, my favorite point guard, the winningest player in Coach Adams history, Sean Sears. Sean, I was good. It was good. Everything good, sir? Everything's fine. How about yourself? Oh, man, I am wonderful. And with us also today, our favorite team leader, Mike King. Mike, what's going on, sir? Number two pick in the draft right now. <laughs> moving up, moving up. All right, fans. So on today's Top Shelf Tuesday in segment one, the best, the worst, and most surprising things. I've got a few myself. Segment two, we're going to do some midseason awards and see uh, – what what we got here, because Sean was on several of our preview episodes. And in segment three, we'll talk about things strictly for entertainment purposes only. And you will find out, fans, this week, I was not entertained. But first, Sean, let's go into the deep end. What was the best thing you saw today? Best thing I saw today was two of them. Uh, it was a tie. It's, it's either between, it's between C.J. Strout and how he's looking so far, and Josh Dobbs just is 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 he's out there looking look just 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 handling his business, man. Handling, handling his, his business. business. Okay. Just winning games. Just winning games. Mike, what about you? What was the best thing you saw today? I mean, selfishly, it was Kyler Murray driving down the field to get that game-winning field goal. I was on my phone. I was at the supermarket, just like, come on, come on, look at that. Mm. That was, that was nice, but in reality, it's C.J. Stroud. I mean, how how's he doing this? I don't know the names of the people on the team. I didn't. <laughs> I just assumed Ohio State, just another Ohio State quarterback. They could keep claiming Burrow, but that doesn't count. <laughs> He's good. He's good. And that's again, gives me hope for next year when we've got, hopefully, whoever our C.J. Stroud will be. Yeah, I'm going to make this a trifecta, but like Sean, I've got two. Best thing I did see was C.J. Stroud, but selfishly, fans, I accept everybody's apology because (laughs) Sam Howe is a ball player. I sat on this show at the end of last season and said, you know what? My people in North Carolina told me what really happened. They didn't surround this guy with talent, and Ron Rivera and his crew – we're paying guys big money, getting little results, and then they put in Taylor Grab a Heineke. Meanwhile, this guy is sitting there ready to go. So kudos to Sam Howe. Keep slinging that hash and keep listening to Coach. Sean, what was the worst thing you saw today, my friend? Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson. Wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, see, my wife, I live in Baltimore. My wife's a Baltimore Ravens fan, so I have to watch their games because it comes on TV. Oh, they, they look bad. They look bad. My uh, I, my wife said that, the, the, she's like, anytime we talk about that we're ready for the Super Bowl, we're one of the best teams, we always lose. We always lose the next game. We always lose. And this was, this was a, a division team, a division game they was playing against what you call another good defense in Cleveland. And this, I wanted to see what they was going to do. And they showed me nothing. And and, and <laughs> I, it, was, it was terrible. Uh, and your favorite fan, uh, Big Brother Rick, keeps telling me that Lamar Jackson is not a quarterback. I, I'm not going to go anywhere near that. But, uh, Mike, what's the worst thing you saw today? I mean, the guy who's not a quarterback is the Giants' third stringer who's <laughs> playing quarterback. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, it would be the Giants because they're barely fielding a team, but it's got to be. If we're, if we're going with real NFL teams, it's the Ravens. I mean, they blew it. They, they had the game. It was like, oh, it's over. And then you not only let them back in, but if you look at the division now, it's super tight. So maybe what they need is to find out that John Harbaugh has been videotaping other NFL teams. And, oh. bench and they can start winning again. 
<laughs> Go blue. Okay. And you'll find out why I said that fans on Thursday's show. Uh, uh I got two. The New England Patriots look uh, really, uh, really uh. bad. And if that coach's last name was Smith, he'd be fired. Okay. Uh, uh. He'd be fired with his team looking like that. What was Mac Jones doing? What was he thinking? Okay. And then the second one was one of these oddities. Every team in the AFC East lost today. Every team in the AFC lost in the AFC East. So that was the worst thing, man. The Patriots look bad. Uh, all teams in the AFC East are on a one-game losing streak. Go ahead and check it out, Faye. Okay. <laughs> Sean, what's the most surprising thing you saw today? I'm not going to lie. I thought the Commanders were going to uh, lose eventually to the Seahawks. So the commanders winning, and like you said, how doing what he do? Uh, that well, was they the did most... lose off the field goal, sir. <laughs> oh, they did. Yes, Seattle kicked the field goal at the end. Oh, see, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't see that. My fault, my fault. I'm not surprised by that, but yes, yeah, Seattle no, I was, I was, uh, kicked the I was, field goal at the end. I was finishing cooking dinner, and, and that's what happened. I apologize. <laughs> that's okay. That's but that still right. was surprising to me that they only they, they I thought they was going to win that drum. I thought Seattle was going to run them based on what happened last week. So I'm with you, Sean. Mike, what's the most surprising thing you saw? Uh, Jacksonville being a no show at home. Um, the other good game, Lions Chargers, was a good game, but Jacksonville to completely not show up. Trevor Lawrence to get outclassed by Purdy. Um, yeah, I was I thought that'd be at least at least a good game. Yeah, you, you, you'll find out in segment three why I totally agree with you. Uh, strictly for entertainment purposes only, but I wasn't entertained. For me, the most surprising thing, and I'm going to go with what Sean said earlier, the Vikings are on a five-game winning streak. Mm -hmm. The Minnesota Vikings are on a five-game winning streak with a guy they, <laughs> to use Mike's term, they just picked up, man. They say, hey, Hey, quarterback, here's, here's a couple of dollars and some, and some blue jeans, and they're on a five-game winning streak. So I think they man. picked it up thinking we're going to get some losses, we'll get a good draft pick, and then no. Oh, yeah. I guess not. I guess we're in the playoffs. Well, well, and that they're doing this without their number one weapon. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. Wait All till right, he gets so, back. So, fans, when we get back, it is the midpoint of the season – we're going to give you some mid-season awards, see what direction the panel wants to go in. We'll be right back on the Odd Coaches Podcast. The reviews are in for Dr. Keith Adams' book, Finding the Balance, My Personal Journey to Academic and Athletic Success. College professor and student-athlete academic expert Dr. Lisa Rubin said, There is nothing out there like this book, so I do hope people will pay attention and give it a read. Former George Mason standout Fowler and Campbell said, Consider this book an opportunity to work directly with Dr. Adams, just like I did. I assure you that there will be something you can take away that will be useful to you throughout your personal journey. Ryan Waite, a recent college graduate who is a software engineer, said, I like how the book is based on research, which makes it good for general students as well as student athletes. The book serves as both a memoir to Dr. Adams' 30-year academic and athletic career, as well as an instructional guide to assist student athletes, parents, coaches, teachers, and administrators navigate through the challenges of finding a better balance between academic and athletic success. The book includes over 15 personal stories and anecdotes from Dr. Adams, along with numerous former players and colleagues from a variety of sports and endeavors. You can order your copy at www.ckasaveproject.org. From the main page, simply click CKA Save Project Services and order the Find the Balance book. For more information, contact Dr. Keith Adams by email at CKA at CKASaveProject.org. Welcome back to the Odd Coaches Podcast in segment two. We are officially at the midpoint of the season, so we're going to give the Odd Coaches Podcast midseason awards. So well, let's start off with most valuable player. At the halfway point. Fellas, you can pick from Jalen Hurts, Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, or Tua. Pick anybody else you want. Mike, who's your most valuable player at the midpoint? Um, so if I'm gonna go by what most valuable player means, it's Mahomes. Cause if he wasn't on that team, I don't think we would 
all we would know is that Taylor Swift's boyfriend's on the team. That's it. But the mm. so they're at the Chiefs. But who's going to probably win? I, I'm going to think it's Jalen Hurts because the Eagles will run away with the best record, even though in many of these games they've done it in spite of Jalen Hurts. But I think <laughs> Jalen Hurts will get it, but Patrick Mahomes deserves it. All right. Sean, what about you? Most valuable player? Tua. Tua? Yeah. You got to give me something about why Tua. Tua, man. Tua. 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 Well, I, I'm going to say it's Tua and Tyreek Hill. Can I, can I, can I put that together? <laughs> feel, feel free, sir. Because <laughs> yeah, it's not Tua, happening. It's not. I know it's not going to happen, but he, he already took Pat Mahomes. So I had to go with something else. That's all right. I'm going to yeah, go with Pat, too, man. I mean, he's the best player playing on what I think the best team is. So, all right. Offensive player of the year. You can pick from Tyreek Hill, Christian McCaffrey, A.J. Brown, Jalen Hurts, or Lamar Jackson. Sean, who is your offensive player of the year right now? Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill. The Any man's... particular reason, or is it because he's running all over everybody? He's running all over everybody. He's you see his stats. He's 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 killing. He's, he's, killing. he's cold. He said at the beginning of the season that he wanted to go for two thousand yards, and he's already like what twelve hundred or something. It's crazy. He's halfway there. Yeah, Mike. So. Agree or disagree? You got anybody else, or is it Tyreek Hill? I got someone else, and actually it might be the MVP, AJ Brown. Come to think of it, because Jalen Hurts. It depends on if Jalen Hurts will get the credit, but AJ Brown's doing it all. Like he's doing a lot of that himself. A uh, thousand yards, just like Tyree Kill on the bet on the maybe the best team in football. Um, and again, Jalen Hurts had a lot of bad games, but AJ Brown hasn't. So I think I'm going him. I, I like to cheat on myself. I like Tyree Hill. I think that's a good pick, uh, and I'd like to see him get two thousand yards. If he gets two thousand yards, he's going to get it. He's going to get it. He's if going he gets get 2,000 it. yards, he's going to get it. All right. Defensive player of the year. I got three that I'm looking at. Miles Garrett, Micah Parsons, and T.J. Watt. Mike, do you like any of those three or somebody else for defensive player of the year? I like Miles Garrett. 11 <laughs> sacks. Um, and unrelated to awards, but in the game when Ronnie Stanley got hurt today, Miles Garrett sat there, like kneeled. Everyone else was celebrating, and he like for whatever the play was, and he kneeled next to him and was like, "Good sportsmanship too." Plus, he's got ten sacks or more seven years in a row. It's not a lifetime achievement award, but eleven hmm. sacks for the halfway point, so it's pretty good. Okay. Uh, yeah, Sean, what about you, sir? Um, I'm going along. I'm going to go with him with Miles Garrett. I play uh, IDP in fantasy, so that means individual defensive players. And Miles Garrett, I have him on my team, and he he averages about eight points a week, like fumble, forced fumble, sacks, tackles for loss. Like he's killing, he's killing, and like right. and he, he's do, he's making big plays in games that determine their wins or losses in their games too. I, I agree with Miles Garrett, but when do you find the time to do all of this? <laughs> I don't know how you and Will do the individual this, that, and the other. So I'm always fascinated by that. But I digress. Okay. Offensive rookie of the year. I don't think there will be any argument. CJ Stroud. Anybody? <laughs> Mike, <laughs> uh, do you second that emotion? That's, just give me the award now. And Sean. CJ Give Stroud. him the word now. Give him the award now. Okay. The offensive rookie of the year. I'm in the minority probably, but I'm going to pick Jalen Carter myself. Sean, is there any other defensive rookie, especially since you do individual uh, fantasy, that you would do for defensive uh, rookie of the year? Um, No. Okay. I got one. Uh, go ahead, Mike. Uh, Devin Weatherspoon for uh, Seattle is ridiculous. It'll probably be Jalen Carter. He's also mm -hmm. ridiculous. But Devin Weatherspoon, if you watch some of the highlights from this year, I mean – hits hard he rushes great coverage he's like sauce gardener but maybe stronger i don't know he's he's pretty good all right i'm biased but i think i've got data mike my mid-season coach of the year is mike tomlin because they have no business winning mm. <laughs> no business winning and each and every week they put themselves in a position to be successful and i believe they're either tied for first or in second place uh, in the uh, AFC North. Sean, 
who's your midseason coach of the year, or are you going with me and Mike Tomlin? Nah, I know he's not going to win it, but I just wanted to give him some love. Uh, what's his name? Uh, from the Texans. Uh, uh, D'Amico Ryans. D'Amico yeah. Ryans, yes. The, for, yes, I want to give – because he's got this rookie quarterback. Nobody expected him to do anything, and they're over above 500. His rookie quarterback is killing. Um, his defense is is looking okay. The offense, he's, 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 like you said, he's got, they got no namers killing in, in – in, <laughs> So yeah, give me give me D'Amico Wines, uh, Texans. Uh, and and following would probably agree with you. Mike, what do you think, sir? So D'Amico Ryan's right now is third is like uh for entertainment purposes only, he's like third uh highest uh, or best odds. Um uh, Mike Tomlin's that. low. I mean, if, if you actually think Mike Tomlin, you could touch I mean, he's got no he's got Kenny Pickett scared uh, to throw. No, I agree with you. I agree with you. Um <laughs> Dan Campbell's the runaway favorite right now. Yep. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. Kind of like Mike Daniel. If they could sneak through and win the AFC East, um, why not? He's a, he's a personality. To his, under his tutelage, Tua has become like, you know, he was Tua was going to be laughed out of the league, and now he's an offensive uh, player of the year potential, or at least uh, yeah. he's two receivers who are, so the quarterback has to be part of that. Um, <laughs> So yeah, Mike McDaniel maybe, but Dan Campbell if I was uh, going to back all it up right. with uh, money. All right, and finally, and it all depends on what direction you want to go, fellas. Comeback player of the year, DeMar Hamlin, just for stepping on the field, or you got Tua, you got Brees Hall, Lamar Jackson, or Josh Dobbs. Sean, what direction would you go to for comeback player of the year? For, for, would y'all call it entertainment purposes? I'm going to go with Josh Dobbs, but D- Lamar, Demar Hamlin's going to get it. Like he's played, he played a game this season. He's yeah. going to get it. Okay, uh, and and there's no argument there. Yeah, Mike, you what can't do you argue. think? Agree completely. I, if I, who should get it based on play Josh Dobbs? Who should get it based on they're going to get it? And they. Uh, it's the sto- a great story, and everyone mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. NFL is going to sell the heck out of it. I mean, it's going to be fun. The award was decided <laughs> before the season started. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Before I say something inappropriate, because Mike's going to lull me into the foolishness, I'm going to say when we get back, we're going to talk about things strictly for entertainment purposes only. The league is not fixed. <laughs> we'll be right back on the hot. Okay. Why should student athletes use the CKA Save Project Academic and Athletic Consulting Services? Over the past 15 to 20 years, colleges, universities, professional sports teams, business organizations, and others have increased their use of consulting services to improve their decision making processes and results. Over the same time, the athletic and academic landscape has changed for high school and college student athletes as the NCAA has raised initial academic eligibility requirements for student athletes while decreasing the number of transfer restrictions. Former college student athletes have noted that they were academic and athletically unprepared for the rigors of college. Let the CKA Save Projects close to 30 years of academic and athletic experience help guide student athletes to increase success as we work to help student athletes achieve the goal of obtaining a college degree. For more information, contact Dr. Keith Adams by email at CKA at CKASaveProject.org. Welcome back to the Odd Coaches Podcast in segment three. We got our OCP top five. Mike, is there anybody worthy of number one this week? So, I've been saying for, I feel like a month now, every team stinks. They're they're all bad. This is the hardest year. The Eagles are number one by default because they, they've won the games they had to win, even though they've looked awful in many of them. Um, I guess the Lions, too, they beat quality win on the road. Uh, and they have the record to back it up. Chiefs three. I mean, no, Chiefs two, Lions three. Let's do that. Chiefs two, Lions three. 49ers four because of what they did to the Jaguars. And then five. Um, still Ravens, but barely. Okay. 
<laughs> Sean, any thoughts on the top five? Mine's, mine's is, is, is just like his. Like he said, you got the Eagles by default because they have, they're they they're just winning their games. You got the Chiefs. You have the Niners. You have um, the Lions. And then the Ravens. That's that's it right there. And you got the uh, Cowboys kind of right there. You got the Browns right there. There's a bunch mm-hmm, of like, mm-hmm. uh, Seahawks right there. There's a bunch of the right there teams. All right. Well, We'll go with that because I got to get your opinions on the season long bets. So at the halfway point, I've got the Steelers eight and a half, over eight and a half. They're at six wins right now. And fellas, they've got the Browns, the Bengals, the Cardinals, the Patriots, the Colts, the Bengals again, Seahawks, and Ravens. Can I get three wins out of that and go to the pay window, Mr. King? It's going to be tough. You named a lot of good teams, but who did it like? You know, week six, week seventeen, they could be playing someone who doesn't care. And there's a lot of like things that'll come into play there. So you gotta hope. Sean, can I get three wins out of the Steelers to close this bet off? I heard the I heard the Colts in there. <laughs> I, I heard, I heard Cardinals. 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 Yeah. They they're gonna they're gonna get a, a win. They, you said they played the Bengals twice? They play the Bengals twice. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna split the Bengals. I, it's a division. Throw the record books out. They're gonna All split right. the Bengals. So that's a that's a strong bet. Yeah. Okay. All right. I got the Jags over ten, and they're at six and three. We got the tight Texans, Bengals, Browns, Ravens, Bucks, Panthers, and Titans. Mister King, can I get five wins out of that to go to the pay window? The last three you named should be wins. So I think you got two on the others. Okay. All right. Uh, Sean, the Jets are going to be on you. I got them over nine and a half. They're four and four. We've got the game tonight, which we will just pass off for obvious reasons, fans. He's a a Raiders fan. So we got Bills, Dolphins, Falcons, Texans, Dolphins again, Commanders, Browns, and Patriots. Can I get six wins out of that for the Jets? Oh, no, no, sir. You can't. (laughs) No, sir. Is is Aaron Rodgers coming back? (laughs) Uh, No. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so no, they're not. I, I I heard two wins. If, if two 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 and a piece. <laughs> All right, Mike. I'm going to give you the Chargers. I got them over nine and a half. Uh, we got Packers, Ravens, Patriots, Broncos, Raiders, Bills, Broncos, and Chiefs. Can I get six wins out of that? There was a lot of bad teams you named, but I'm going to go no because they okay. pretty much win them all. All right, Sean, I got Green Bay over seven and a half, and they got three big wins now. Can I get four more wins with the Chargers, Lions, Chiefs, Giants, Bucks, Panthers, Vikings, and Bears? Can I get four more wins? You got one. Pan- Panthers, <laughs> Bucks, Bears. Giants. No, nah, it's not. Yeah. No, nah, I don't see it. I don't see it. Oh, man. I don't actually, see I need tactics. five wins, so that makes it even worse. Yeah, All right, we're going to just skip Carolina because that's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Mike, Washington, they're six and a half. I got the over. They're four and six. We got the Giants, Cowboys, Dolphins, Rams, Jets, 49ers, and Cowboys. Can I get three wins out of this? See, a lot of good teams you named. They should beat the Giants. The Giants always beat the Commanders. <laughs> Beat them, so if they. I mean, they're going to be like ten point favorites, and if they lose that one, then no. Uh, Just need three more wins, man. I'm going to say yes because I think you'll beat the Giants, and then Week 17, Cowboys might have, not have anything to play for, and you squeeze another one. And Sam Howell's so good. I detect a little snarkiness there, but <laughs> Sean, I've got Seattle finally in the West. Over eight and a half. There are six wins now. Can I get three out of Rams, 49ers, Cowboys, 49ers, Eagles, Titans? Wow. Steelers and Cardinals. I need three wins. Did you mm. count three wins out of that? <laughs> Oof. I, I heard two and a P. I didn't I didn't hear three. Because oh, I mean, man. but they have they gotta play the Rams. You, you said one more time. They gotta right? play the forty. They gotta play the forty niners twice. And following tells me they always split with the forty nine. They do always split with them. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And they got the Cardinals at the end, man. I think I can get three out of yeah, that. Yeah. I already got six. I just all need right, them to right. get three more. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That, I, I, I can see that happening. All right. Strictly for entertainment purposes only. All right. Last week, I went two and three. This week, I went one and four. I have not had a best go of it. I did have Pittsburgh minus three. That went to the pay window. I had Tennessee mm. over 38 and a half. I thought Will Levis and those guys would put up some more points. Not necessarily a win, but more points. Two play, I had Seattle minus six and Detroit minus three. Detroit pushed, and Seattle couldn't stop the uh, commanders. My money line pick, Baltimore, Cincinnati, and Dallas. What are you guys doing? And my <laughs> upset was Jacksonville, and none of that panned out. Week 11 games of note, we have four teams on by, guys. We've got Atlanta on the by, Indianapolis, New England. They need a by. And New <laughs> Orleans. I heard uh, the quarterback got hurt today. So, uh, there <laughs> is Jameis coming back. We've got a legitimate – <laughs> Sean, we got a legitimate Thursday game with Cincinnati versus Baltimore. Will you guys actually attend in person? Listen, I I, I may be there. I still, I'm still working on my tickets. I may be there, so yes, All I'm, right. my, my, I'm like, I'm like sixty three percent on. I'm going. Okay, and Sunday, not the best roster of games, but we got something. Pittsburgh against Cleveland, Giants coming to town. Uh, Mike, did you uh, secure uh, the Bobian tickets? I know. I don't. I don't want to see that. <laughs> Okay. Tennessee versus Jacksonville. Jacksonville better get another win there. Tampa Bay versus San Francisco and Arizona versus Houston. So, panel, starting with Mr. King, what are you looking forward to next week? Um, It's got to be Monday Night Football, right? Eagles, Chiefs, Eagle oh, fans yeah. still crying about a non-call uh, or a call. There shouldn't have been a call. Right. So that's, that's definite, but uh, Bengals Ravens, I think, will be uh, the one that's most interesting just because if the Ravens lose that one, then they've lost to everyone in the division. Wow. And if you've lost to everyone in the division, how can you be taken seriously? Um, mm -hmm. So the, the Ravens have to win. And, th and that's at home. They lost. Was today, today was at home. Yeah, right? today, yeah. Was, today was at home. Yeah. Yep. They've, they got three, they have three straight home games. I think they, they lost at Pittsburgh. Yeah, it was at Pittsburgh. So, but then they would, so they'd be 0 and 3 with two home ones. Like they have to win. This is um, their whole season must win. Wow. All right. Sean, what are you looking forward to, sir? Yeah. I'll, the um, both games that he said, the, you got to, and then they're both the um, primetime games. That Thursday night game is probably going to be the best Thursday night game of the year mm -hmm. with the Ravens and the Bengals. And then you got the Monday night with the Chiefs and the Eagles, best two teams in the, in the Super Bowl teams. So, what I predicted was going to be Super Bowl again this year. Well, selfishly, I'm looking forward to seeing if I can get another win closer because uh, Thanksgiving week is uh, the following week, and that's one of the best betting days <laughs> between uh, college football, the Egg Bowl, uh, Thanksgiving Day, a lot of parlays, uh, opportunities <laughs> there, so I'm kind of locked into that. So. On behalf of our cavalcade of stars, I'm Dr. Keith Adams saying thank you for listening and or watching the Odd Coaches podcast, and we will see you on the sidelines. Till next time, take care. The Odd Coaches podcast is sponsored by the CKA Save Project. The CKA Save Project is an industry leader in providing student-athlete academic and athletic support. From assessing student-athletes' academic and athletic skills to measuring and monitoring student-athlete academic progress to improving student-athlete time management and organizational skills, the CKA SAVE Project provides wraparound services for student-athletes from middle school through college. For more information, visit us on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org or schedule a free consultation with Dr. Keith Adams by emailing cka at ckasaveproject.org. We hope you enjoyed today's show. The Odd Coaches Podcast drops new episodes every Tuesday through Friday on most weeks. Make sure you subscribe to the Odd Coaches Podcast on Apple Music, iHeartRadio, Podbean, Spotify, and YouTube. Follow the Odd Coaches Podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Odd Coaches. 
Follow Dr. Adams on Twitter and Instagram at CKA Save Project. In addition, follow Coach Mike Francis on Twitter and Instagram at Coach Franchise, spelled Coach F-R-A-N-C-H-I-Z-E. For more information about the CKA Save Project, please visit them on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org. See you next time on the Odd Coaches Podcast.